as we go. <sighs> and I am going to get started. Um, we are, as Ron likes to say, land in the plane. We're going to land the plane on this series that we've been in. Um, and uh, it's entitled, I don't even have that, yeah, The Great Unknown, I do have a slide for that. The Great Unknown, the idea being that throughout Scripture, we know a lot of great stories of really famous people, and we can quote, you know, uh, or, or at least remember the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and King David, and all of these, and of course, Jesus, I, I don't mean to skip him over by any means, um, but we can look at these great characters in our history, in the biblical history, and yet oftentimes we overlook the amazing and miraculous, common, everyday people. And that's what we've been doing, is looking into the lives of those, of, of those people, and hopefully you're seeing and, 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 and kind of looking back, knowing that we are like those people, we are the great unknown. God is writing his scripture. Even now, we are in the final chapter. We are in the, the last few sentences, I believe, of the final chapter of God's great story. And he wants each and every one of us to play our role in it. And we keep talking about this is, our, this is about our lives. We're a significant part of that. But we, it, it's about his story. And so we want our lives, our story, to highlight his. And I'm hoping you're connecting those dots. Um, if you miss any one of the series, uh, you can go back online, lifechurchvineyard.com, and you can find those messages, and I really hope you do. Um, last week, I, I felt was really... <laughs> It was really good. It ministered to me, um, and, and I say this often that I feel I'm just one of you guys. I just happen to have a different calling, and I have to use my words up on stage. And some of you that would just cripple you, but I've got a lot of words. So here, you know, that's what we do. Um, but I loved last week, and, and one of the things God spoke to us last week, um, He asked us this, uh, to ask ourselves this question: Do what I have to offer? Does what I have to offer really matter? And, and I feel like that's a lot of us. And if it's not you right now, it probably has been or it will be soon. And so we, I, I like kind of engaging with this question. Does what I have to offer really matter? In the grand scheme of things, my gifts, my talents, my time, my treasure, do those things matter to God, to anybody else? And I think we just heard a wonderful song that says, yes, when you have gifts and talents that are poured out and given back to God and to his people, yes, it absolutely matters. We are the part of the story right now. God is using us. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and he's preparing a place. We're all going to this wedding banquet here real soon of the, of the Father. Yeah, we're, we're heading there soon. We're going to have a big old meal. But right now, we've got some work to do. And God left us in charge, and he wants us to, 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 be, to, to know that it really does matter how we spend our days. And I believe that, that how we answer that question, does what I have to offer really matter, um, shapes our level of cooperation with God. And we looked at this last week, um, and we saw this in Corinthians. It says, for we are God's fellow workers. God's at work. The Holy Spirit is at work, believe it or not, in this nation, even now, all of this stuff going on, God is at work, but he's got co-workers. He's not just doing it by himself. He wants to use those who are bold and, and faithful and loving servants. We are God's fellow workers, and if you're not at work, you're not cooperating. You're not being in, in, in part of his plan in these final days. And so, yes, our lives absolutely matter. And they tell his story. Our life, his story. Um, another part of last week, just kind of recap a little bit as we launch kind of forward and, and end up this week, um, is was a very touching story that I, that I brought up, really touched my heart, surprisingly even, um, in John 6, if you want to write that down, or you can go visit last week's message. But it was about this unnamed boy who offered what he had. 
Jesus was out in the wilderness, and he was not in the wilderness, but out uh, on the mountainside and just preaching and teaching, and it got to be late in the day, and he's like, oh, we got to eat, and he knew this, and, and, and long story short is, is he, he said, well, what are we going to do for food? And the disciples are like, oh, I don't know, let's go buy a bunch of, and this, this young unnamed boy comes up and offers his five loaves and two fish. And, and I just picture that little boy kind of standing, like, I got nothing else, but I got this. And he, and he just gives that to Jesus. And Jesus uses that gift to feed thousands of people. And I, 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 what got me emotional about it was just this little boy giving all of he had. And then watching as God turned that into something miraculous. And, and, and I believe that's at the very heart of God for what you have to offer. And if you're struggling, does what I have matter to God? God's saying, whatever it is, it absolutely matters. And he wants to ask us, are we willing to give that to him and watch him blow it up and multiply it? I love that interaction. Oh, I'm finally on or something. <laughs> I love that interaction with Jesus in, in that miraculous feeding. And it kind of led us to this. This question, I think, is important as well. What am I doing with my five loaves and my two fish? And maybe you're like, I don't even know what that means. What are my loaves? What are my two fish? Like, what do I have to offer? Well, I, I want to tell you this. God's not keeping it a secret. You just need to, to, to ask, have a conversation and say, Lord, what are my loaves and fish? Like, how can I serve you? What's the little bit that I have that I can give to your kingdom to see you multiply it? And I promise you, again, he doesn't want to keep it a secret. Um, I, and then I ended last week with the starfish story. Um, I won't read through the whole thing, but, but the idea of a little boy walking on the beach and he's picking up starfish and throwing them in the water and one after the other and the guy's like, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm trying to save these starfish. And he goes, well, you, there are hundreds on this beach and for miles and miles, you can't save them all and you can't make a difference. And this little boy said, picks one up, throws it in and said, I made a difference to that one. And I just love that. Again, that's at the very heart of God saying, I can't do, I can't save everybody. I can't make a difference to everybody, but I can make a difference to one person. That person in front of me, that person that God brings to me today, and then another one tomorrow. I can do it one person at a time. I just, again, that just kind of really, really hits me in a good way. And, and I feel like uh, when we do that, when we give our five, or uh, the, the loaves and the fish, and when we just try, try to worry and, and, and be concerned and pour ourselves out on behalf of one person, I believe there's a very real transaction with God. And he gives us, and I said last week, gives us a little fist bump. And, and I, I seek that on a regular basis with God. Literally after every message, I go to him, I go to my office and I just, I just pray, Lord, what do you think? How did I do? Did I give you my loaves? Did I give you my fish? And I just wait for that fist bump. Because even when I do it really well, there's a fist bump. And when I don't do it well, but I tried really hard, there's a fist bump. And so I created this. This is something I have. Well done, Mitchell P. God wants to, he, wa he loves that. He wants to let you know that it matters, that when we pour ourselves out, whether you do it really well or you totally bomb, when you come to him and just give it, he gives you that fist bump, man, and that's that, that hug or whatever, whatever relates to you, however you want to see that. He, gives you, he embraces you, say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for doing it well or doing it sloppy but with a lot of heart. He loves it both. So today, again, we're wrapping up the great unknown. And who's the great unknown that we're kind of t highlighting today? It's you. And you, and you, and you, every one of us in here, we are the great unknown. A hundred years from now, people will probably not know your name. Your relatives probably won't remember who their great, great grandpa was, or what he did, or where he worked, or whatever. They won't remember us per se. We're the great unknown. But as we live a life that points to his, our lives, his story, he's the one that's going to get all the glory. That's why we're here.
And so, Lord, as we just kind of continue on through and, 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 and finish up today and, and to dive into your word, Lord, I just ask your blessing and your revelation and your spirit and favor would be upon all of those who hear right now. That you would open us up, God, and speak individually, personally to each and every one of us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, open up uh, your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. I'll have it up here too if you don't have your Bible with you. Or if you want to borrow the Bible in the seat backs, you can do that. Um, if you don't have a Bible, you can take those for your very own. Lara will even autograph it. I don't know. That was so dumb. That was just dumb. <laughs> but she will. Okay, uh, Matthew 13, starting in verse 3. It says this. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Amen, Lord, we are hearing. Um, I, I, I would need to be fair to the, to the passage here. The context of this passage is primarily about the person receiving the seed. It's about being good soil. And I just want to let you know that next, next week I'm going to be starting a new series, um, and, and I've called it Becoming Good Soil. So that's the primary context of this verse. It's very important that you always look, you don't just pull out what you want and use it how you want. So I, I want to identify that clearly, that the point, the primary point of this is to, to learning how to be good soil and identify what kind of soil you are at the moment. But... There's also other applications that we can draw from it that I'm going to do today. So, th so this passage in general falls within a whole context of a few different parables, um, which are just stories that help kind of relate a point that Jesus has, and it's about the kingdom of God. It's a bigger picture. If you want more about the kingdom of God, come on Wednesday morning, Wednesdays at noon, Ron is doing, are you still continuing with that, Ron? Yeah. All summer about the kingdom of God. If you want to know more about the kingdom of God, See me afterwards or see Ron and we'll hook you up how to get there at noon for a small group. But that's what this whole night kind of grouping of parables is all about. And so as it relates to this series, um, I want to say that a significant part of our mission as unknown, common, everyday followers is to scatter the seeds. So in this context, we are the farmers. And just to let you know how my word, I, I hear this in my head, we are farmers. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys followed up with that. But that's, we are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Okay. So, <laughs> so in this, we are, we are the farmers in this parable called to go and scatter the seed. We are called to go and present the kingdom of God to every, everybody everywhere. Wherever the seed may land, we are called to scatter and, and scatter the seed. In fact, before he left and, and ascended into heaven, Jesus said to the disciples, go make disciples of all, of all people throughout all the earth. That includes us. What was he saying? Go bring the kingdom of God forward. Scatter your seed everywhere. How they receive it is up to them. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today and, and even more in the series to come. Scatter your seed. Love on people. Serve people. And then connect the dots for people. With all this brokenness in this world, people need to understand the bigger picture. If we just look right here, right now, about the, the United States of America, or even smaller, this, this city, this, this church, we are going to just, it is worth being miserable about. 
But when we look at those things in the lens of the bigger picture, God's kingdom, it all makes sense. God knew this brokenness was upon us. He knew we were destined for it. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, this was our destiny, that we would, be, we would have a miserable, that sin has consequences and brings about death and misery and destruction. We understand that. But when we give it a bigger picture and we look at what God's doing, the kingdom of God, we understand that we needed a savior to rescue us from that brokenness. And that's what we need to understand, not just here, but deep in our heart. And when we understand that, it, it just comes out of us. We can't help it. I have a hope in Jesus and here's why. And I, and, and you tell your story because you can't not tell the story when, th- when things are exciting for you. So again, that's primarily what it was about. Is it, well, yeah, so, so this is about us scattering our seed everywhere and on everyone all the time. And I'll come back to that. But first, so what is the seed? Specifically, and as it says in this passage, it's, it's about the kingdom of God. So as you look down uh, in Matthew 13, um, Um, it it, it talks about, so listen in to what the parable means. So Jesus goes on to explain to the disciples, here's what that parable just means. And we're going to get into more of this in the series to come. But in a nutshell, it says, listen to what the parable of the sower means when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and understands it. And he starts talking about the different soil. And when the seed lands on this kind of person, here's what happens. And this kind of person, here's what happens. But this is about communicating the kingdom of God. So we are called to scatter that seed, again, everywhere and on everyone all the time. But here's a ginormous disclaimer. It has to be done in relationship, person to person, um, this past week has been agonizing for anybody who's on social media. The, it, it, it just brings up the word vomit to me. I just Everybody feels like you can go on social media and vomit. And just and it, as I vomit and I call and, and I just kind of, that when I do that, people are going to come to Jesus. No, people don't come to Jesus because of vomit. People come to Jesus in relationship when you help connect the dots. So as we're scattering this seed, we don't just drop truth bombs, go, there it is. If you don't believe it, you're a sinner. I don't want to have anything to do with you. If you believe this way, God is damning you. Well, what you're saying is that God is damning half of those people, you know, the people that don't believe the way you believe. That's not my God. God wants every single one of them. So if you are not sharing the truth of God in love, you're just speaking your own something, and it's vomit. And I'm, I'm telling you, and, and I don't care. I, I, I so care what people think about me, but I don't care if, 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 if you don't like this message. You need to know that, that when, we call, when God calls us to share the truth, it's always in love always in love, always in relationship, always caring. And I love this, this, I've heard, have you ever heard this before? People need to know that you care before they care what you know. Oh, I should have that up there. That was good. But so I love that. And it's not mine, but people need to know that you care before they care what you know. If you share the truth, but you're not sharing in love, they don't care, but when you love them, you care, you're in relationship and you're serving and you're loving and you, you're just in the, you can tell them anything because they know that you care. It may, they may not receive it and be like, oh, I've seen the light and praise God, but they know you care. And now that means something to them. But if you just drop a truth bomb and, and just turn or burn, you sit, You're not helping the cause of Christ when you vomit on people. (laughs) It is important how we share. I love at the end of this passage, it says right there, he who has ears, let him hear. It says a couple things to me. It says, he who has ears, let him hear. Listen up, pay attention. This is a big deal. It's trying to get our attention, but it's also saying, He who has ears, let him hear if you want to hear. 
And what do I mean by that? Not everybody wants to hear about the gospel of Christ yet. They, they know that they need it. They know they're missing something, but they're not ready for it. Who cares? We're still going to spread the seed. But it's saying here, he who has ears, let him hear. For those who you want to listen, listen up. And in those who aren't ready yet, I'm, still, I'm just going to plant a seed. Um, a verse that we probably don't like very much is, um, for the message of the cross is foolish, foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. We hear these messages. We hear the truth. We hear the life. We come in here and we hear this and we're like, yes, Lord, this is your power, your presence. Give me more. And for those who are perishing, those who are resisting God, those who have their agenda and are set on living their best life in whatever the way they want to, when we talk, it is foolishness. So what do we do? We plant a seed. And we walk away. And if we're given the opportunity, we come back and, and maybe someone else has an opportunity. What do they do? They water it. Just like Apollos and Paul and Apollos that we talked about last week. Someone plants the seed and then someone comes along and waters it. And then someone else waters it and waters it. And if they want to become good soil and they lean into God, God's going to make it grow. Two people can make it grow. God and them. God will make it grow as much as they want, but if they want to stifle it and they want to resist it, it's like falling on the rocky path and it's just going to go away right away. That's up to them. And yet, we still keep planting. We still keep scattering our seed everywhere and on everyone with as much love and compassion and understanding and mercy as we can muster. Those people on the other side of the aisle that you are sure are just going to hell in a handbasket and are just damned before they even get a chance, they've got stories and they've got hurts and they've got brokenness and they've got bitterness and you can either add to that crap or you can share about the love of a God who sees through that. And you can say, I, know, I understand that brokenness. Here's where I came from. Here's my story. And you can share that in a way that they are drawn into, in a way that makes them turn their head like this, like, I never thought of that before. You mean God doesn't hate me? And, and we draw people in by relationship. We, we talk and we have conversations and, and we model our faith. We don't just spew out the law. Let's see where we are. But here's the thing. As we finish up today, um, if there's no sowing, there's no growing. If you're not scattering the seed in the lives of the people around you, the people that you're in relationship, your families, your spouse, your kids, your coworkers, your friends, your schoolmates, if you're not sowing, there's no growing. That's a, that's a duh statement. I'm okay with, yeah, duh. Well, Let's put it into, pra put into practice. If you're not sowing, you're not going to be reaping. God has chosen us, the common, unknown, everyday folk, to carry out his mission in relationship. And what does that look like? It, it, it's just loving conversations. One-on-one, -on -one, person to person, not on text, not on email, not on social media, in relationship, in a loving relationship with those who need Jesus, which is all of us. Serving, loving, and inviting. Um, we have connect to cards out. Um, I would love for everybody to take a couple of these and keep them with you all the time, in your purse, in your pocket, your wallet, whatever, in your car, and just invite people into the family. I don't it's not just about coming on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning is good, and I hope you guys are encouraged. I believe God speaks to us and encourages us and, and gives us what is, uh, we need to kind of go out into the world. But it's not just inviting them into a Sunday service. It's about inviting them into a family where you can be needed and known and equipped and discipled. Grab these cards and invite people in. Tell them your story as it highlights his story. Invite them in. See for yourself. 
You think I'm crazy? You ought to meet some of the people on, on Sunday mornings. You know, come on, there's some wackos. We just need to connect the dots for people. Again, share our story and how it highlights his. At the end of this kind of passage that we're talking about, um, 1 Corinthians 13 again, at the very end of this parable, as he um, explains it, it, he says this, but the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is a man or woman who hears the word and understand it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. In that, what he is saying is, is that we need to help them understand it in hopes that they'll receive it and then bear fruit. They need to understand the gospel. Yes, they resist, resist it. Yes, it's foolishness to them. But as, as they're watching us live this out and love and serve and all of the things, we can help them understand what's going on, the bigger picture, in hopes that we pray and pray that part of that, that they'll turn their heart back to God and they'll receive that seed into their life. And as we know, all it takes is a mustard seed, the very tiniest seed. If they have a little bit of faith, man, God can work with that and he'll make it grow. But let's not offend people with the way we present the gospel. The gospel is offensive in and of itself. That's another sermon. But, but let's, let's love people in so that we can prepare that soil, till it up so that they would better receive that seed that God wants to, to water and grow and grow and grow. So I'm going to have the, the worship team come up. We're, gonna, we're just going to finish in, in a little bit of time of, of meditation. Um, please feel free. You can sing out. But, but this is always a time that, that I always say, let's respond to what God is speaking to us. And um, I don't know if this is rattling cages or not. Maybe it's in my mind and I have all these kind of... Um, conversations with people that I never actually talk to, you know those in your mind and you're, and, and so I don't want to dial this up, but, but if you're feeling rattled by anything that I had to say, I don't believe it was me. I, I hope and pray that it was the Spirit of God stirring in you and, and I just, I, I, I'm praying that God will stir that even more. So if you've got some things you're wrestling with, um, don't immediately blame me, you can... <laughs> It might be, Lord, don't, if it's anything I said that's not of you, God, just take that away. But if God's moving in you at all in a certain way, I want you just to do this, just to, to lean in just a little bit, just to lean in. So go ahead and stand with me, if you will. Maybe just a couple things just to get you thinking is, is am, I, am I sowing into anybody and anybody around me, um, am I sowing the seed, the kingdom of God? Am I communicating? Am I, am I living it out? Am I modeling it? Or am I just holding my seed to myself? Um, if you want prayer for that, the prayer ministry team are going to be on the side. They can help kind of maybe connect some dots for you or just pray for you, just encourage you. Um, and then the, maybe the second one is... Um, sowing and then the next one is growing am I growing or do you just feel stagnant or stuck or frustrated or fearful that you, that, that, you know going that this nation's going to crash and burn and that's going to ruin everything and God's going to go what do I do now if you're if any whatever God's doing in your heart just just respond to that and again you can do it right where you're sitting you can come and pray at the altar get prayer here um, yeah Lord, we just present ourselves right now, God, and, and we ask you just to, just to speak to our hearts and encourage us in the, in, the, in the right direction, Lord. Encourage us with the seed. Encourage us with the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would pour out on your people even right now. And you can open up your hands just to receive this, but, but God wants to pour into you a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit of God. The God that created the heavens and the earth is a personal God. He knows you by name. He knows everything you are going through right now. And he wants to empower you with his presence, his love. He wants to overwhelm you in such a way that you are overwhelmed. So come, Holy Spirit. 
speak to your people and minister. Amen. Lord, I come.